Hello, Richard. Hello. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Um, so uh, we thought, uh, whilst we're in lockdown, it would just be really great to have uh, a bit of a chat, really, about what the role of the designer is and also the process yeah. of the designer. And this will be, so uh, you are a designer. Also, you're a costume designer as well for the pantomime, aren't you? That's true. And um, this will be the third, the third time that you've designed the panto for the Queen's Theatre. Yes, yes. So we're in the middle of the process of designing. Well, we're quite far down actually into the process aren't yeah. we, of designing yeah. for Aladdin, and it's we're quite far ahead. Why, why, why are we so far ahead? <laughs> Because we've been trying to get further ahead every year and because uh, it just helps with the workshops, it helps with the costings, it means that we're not having to cut things at the last minute. And also there's not a lot else on at the moment. In the theater, the yes, it takes a long time to build. It was built at the theatre. Most yeah. of it is built at the theatre and, uh, and it takes our workshop quite, quite a few months and they're balancing the building of it around uh, making up a production, aren't they? So that's... So far, yeah, yeah. and so we're quite ahead. Even the script isn't written yet. I mean, we've got the first, we've got the first draft today. Yeah. Oh, and, good. Well, yeah, right. we, we based the design on a, a first scenario from Andrew, didn't we? And then yeah, we, we made yeah. some decisions around that as well. But yeah. first, before we look at, so we're going to do a bit of a sneak peek of um, of the design of Aladdin. But I, I, not everybody knows exactly what a designer is. What is a designer? Well, uh, the, the designer is basically responsible for the look of everything on the stage, uh, set costumes, props, not the lighting, that's a separate designer's job, and obviously not the sound, but yeah, the, the, the look of everything, the interpretation of the, of the, the, the script into a, a, a visual is the, the designer's job to lead on, but working very closely with yourself, the director and writers, where writers are involved. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's interpreting somebody else's idea as a writer and then the input from the director and making that into the, the ideas for the scenery and the costumes and the props. And how did you, how, do, how does somebody become a designer? How did, what was your... <clears throat> well, what I did, well, I was, in, in a way, it's quite straightforward. I, I was involved in amateur dramatics when I was younger. Uh, and then I, you know, did, did a, a levels decided I wanted to do an art degree and did an art foundation course and it was only then I really found out that you could study theatre design at degree level um, and that's what I did I went to uh, what was Trent Polytechnic in Nottingham and did a degree in theatre design and then got a job in a theatre. When did you design your first panto? Uh, I've designed my first panto probably about uh, only only about 20 years ago. I say only, it sounds like forever. But I have been working for quite a long time as a designer before that and haven't done any pantomimes. I've done Christmas shows. I've done uh, Christmas musicals like Wizard of Oz, uh, things, things like that, Christmas Carol. So that there were, you know, things you did at Christmas that weren't pantomime. So that was my first pantomime was uh, Dick Whittington at Salisbury Playhouse, which I think was about 2001. And what is, what special about Panto for you? Uh, it's, it's just, um, you, you, the, well, the, the important thing for me is, it's the first experience most people will have of theatre in their lives, of live theatre. And the most important thing about Panto, which is of course, Glitter. I like glitter. Um, yeah, so we slather that all over the set. Lots of sparkles, twinkly costumes, and it, you know, make it look as beautiful as possible. And audiences like glitter. So but I think you, you did tell me a little bit of a story. What was it, what was it you learned from your first panto? Because I think... Uh, well, well, I learned from my first panto that if you don't put glitter on it, it doesn't work very well. The first one I did was Dick Whittington. It looked like a panto, but it didn't sparkle like one because I didn't actually design any glitter into it. And now I've learned from that mistake and get the glitter out at the first opportunity. <laughs> yeah. so, how to, so how do you go about designing a panto? Um, well, um, I usually work uh, from a, a scenario, actually, as we've been saying, you yeah. don't usually have the full script to start off with. 
So the scenario is a list of scenes. You sort of know what the story is, but there'll be notes on the story, which characters are in which scene. And that I like to start off by just doing little sketches of what I think those scenes should look like, like very quick scribbly little ideas. Um, and then from that, I'll, uh, I'll try and combine those into a, into a design that works. Uh, but you know, quite quickly into a three dimensional model in cardboard which is a, a scale model. Yeah, because that's the process, isn't it? That it goes into the model, then you present it to the director, you pre we present, yeah. together we present, and we work on it, and then, but it's, generally it's in a kind of white card version, isn't it? Why, well, there's yeah. this idea, I mean, I mean, it's very rare that there is white card now, but what is yeah. a white, what's the difference between a white card model and a final model? Well, the, the, the way I work, the white card model is your first idea. So it's like doing a, a pencil drawing on paper. And you're not necessarily worrying about all the color and exact sizes. It's more about shapes and, uh, and, and sort of uh, um, entrances, exits, uh, how the set's going to work. But it's, it's not in finished scale. It's not in finished detail. It just shows the director primarily how the design could work and the workshop, how big it's going to be. But having yeah. said that, I, I do tend to pretty much always want to color my yeah. white cards in just to give an idea of where I'm going to be going with it. So that when, when you've done it, it does actually work. Do you want to show us them? Show us the model. So we've got, yeah, the yeah. So yeah. here we are in the model. Uh, this is a, a scale model. It's at one to 25 scale which means uh, there's a little model of a person on there. That's how big a person is in scale. And that's how big my hand is in real life. So that gives you an idea how big the model is. So this is, uh, this is Aladdin. This is set up for the opening of the show when the audience will be coming in. So we've got uh, scenery uh, either side of the stage and creating a, a sort of proscenium arch is what, what we call it. And then within that, there are uh, front cloths. And then behind that, uh, we, we set up scenery for various different scenes. We also fly things in and out. So I'll just, uh, we've got the, the sign for the show at the top of the show there, which is Aladdin, and that, I've set the sticky tape off. I can fly that out. And then we've got uh, That's a the beginning of the there. show, isn't it? It's, a, it's kind of like a little toy theater, isn't it? In one way. It's, a, it's a, yeah, it is. And so we're lucky at the Queen's, aren't we? Because we've got a fly tower. So we've got, we've got the space. The, the height of the stage again above the stage so that we can fly whole pieces of scenery in and out but there are lots of theatres that don't have fly towers. Yeah that, that's true so I mean it, this, that's the sort of two, two sorts of theatre really the, yeah. the ones that you work with flying and the ones without I mean I've, I've worked quite a lot in, in both uh, and there are different challenges to each um, but to, it's, you know, it's definitely nice for a panto to be able to do big scene changes, to be able to fly yeah. things in and out. And so the, uh, there is, um, we've got two worlds here, haven't we? And there is a bit of a tradition about worlds and entrances, aren't there? There, there is, uh, you know, tr traditionally, um, the uh, stage left is, is where, where, where the baddies come on from. It's the well, you, sinister you, side. You point to stage left. Yes. So this side of the stage is stage left. Uh, left. Uh, well, it's sinister means left. That's where, you know, that's where we get yeah. the word from. Um, and and it, it goes right back to, to Greek theatre. Um, you know, you'd have entrances. Uh, that the audience would know if somebody was coming from stage left, they were coming from abroad, from out of town, from out of the home, whereas stage right, that was your, your home side, that was the, 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 the sort of good side, the, the safe side of the stage. Um, so we've sort of done that quite traditionally here, and we, we've got, uh, it's Aladdin, so we've got Aladdin's world um, on stage right, and we've got Abanaza's world, on stage left with an emphasis on the ABBA because he comes from Scandinavia. <laughs> That's our little modernization of the story, isn't it? It is, it is, yes. And then so this what we're looking at is the front cloth, isn't it? So this is this is yeah. This is all painted on a piece of yeah, material. Yeah, this will all it? be painted on uh, on a, a canvas uh, cloth that, that's uh, then stretched at the bottom with with a bar and attached to a fly bar at the top. 
the the sketch I've got on there is the idea of this is uh, evil Uncle Abenazer's um, uh, hiding or, or, or starting off in the fjords, in the frozen fjords. Uh, which is what his side of the stage is about. We've had that first introductory scene and then we're going into much more Aladdin's world in the marketplace and we've got a much uh, warmer, brighter kind of feel. A lot of depth because we're going to do big uh, song and dance numbers in there and introduce all the characters in the play. Uh, so yeah, um, uh, it, so we, you know, I've got uh, I've got three dimensional uh, pieces, um, the market barrows, I've then got cut out pieces with bits of detail on being the streets and then right at the back in the center I've got the Sultan's Palace uh, which is uh, uh, which will have practical doors in it so we can have entrances through there as well um, and some of these pieces uh, will will fly out for scene changes some of them will will just fold up or, or truck off stage and how many um, how many different locations do we have how many different scene so, uh, uh, quite a lot. I mean, we, we combine know. things. So we, we go from, from this scene, we go into the into um, Twanky's laundry, but which is also set up within the marketplace. We've then got uh, outside the, the cave, inside the cave, uh, Aladdin's palace once he becomes rich, or oh, we've got Abenazer's lair in the fjords when he's stolen the lamp. We've got a magic carpet ride. Uh, we've probably got some other bits as well. Uh, yeah, there's, there's just like, oh, this, uh, the street of a thousand and one doors. So there's lots of different locations uh, and we, we create them in different ways. Lots of opportunity for fun, lots of entrances and exits, particularly yeah. the street of a thousand and one doors. Yeah, I'll, I'll fly that in now. I've got the bit of bubble here for that. So we can have a look at that as well. Um, so th this is, this flies in. Uh, this is just behind where we've seen that that cloth fly out, uh, but this has this has practical doors in it. So this isn't just cloth. The top of it's cloth. The bottom of it is is more solid. It's a uh, it's a, a flown flat, which is called a Frenchman. And tell, so, what happens now? What we're doing now is I, I've been working with uh, with the production manager, uh, and and before that, a, a bit with the head of construction. And we've just been going through the model, talking about, you know, basically how big it is, what the finishes might be, how we might build it. And then they've been able to go away and, and put a, a costing on that. And tell us about the costume designs as well. Will you, will you bring us back to you so we can look at yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've already, we've, I mean, we've already released some of the costume designs for people to colour in. Good. Which are yeah, really, yeah. they're so beautiful. But yeah. how so well, Again, again, it's uh, it's get, getting that that detail into the into the character drawings. People have some people have uh, expectations of of every story you tell in pantomime. They've, they've seen that they've seen books, they've seen films, uh, they've seen you know, all kinds of animations of, of Aladdin. So you may you may try and make a nod to that maybe, but also you want to surprise people. Um, so I've, in fact, I've got some some books here. Uh, of things I was referring to when I was doing the costumes. Um, the, you know, the fir first one, Ivan Bilibin, uh, is a, uh, a Russian uh, illustrator and designer that we were uh, talking about. Um, he does very, you know, very beautiful detail. Kind of tries to hold it up to the camera. Anyway, we can yeah, download can one piece. And uh, yeah, hold it right up. Hold it right. Cover your face yeah. and hold it up. Let's have yeah. a look. Yeah, yeah just yeah, there. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So that yeah, so some of them were done as, as just book illustrations, mm -hmm. uh, some of them were as artworks, but he also was a theatre designer and designed theatre oh. and opera in oh. Russia about a hundred years ago. So I've been referring to him. And then the uh, one of the other things I love is folk costume. So this is one of my folk costume books. You probably you, if you look at the costumes carefully, you'll probably see details of costumes out of this book. Uh, uh, you know, th th things like this, just you know, sh shapes of costumes, ideas for costumes, uh, and these. I think these are actually Greek, but you, you get sort of that that great sort of fairy tale quality in them. Um, then another of my favourite books gets a big weighty book off the floor. 
costume patterns and design by Oscar Tilke, which is you know one of the uh, you know this was uh, when I was at college. This was the greatest costume reference book in the world. This was before the internet, and this has everything in it to mount folk costume. It's marvellous. And then you just add glitter. Um, but you know, pantomime has a has a great history. Uh, so it's it's you know I really like looking at you know looking right back at the history of pantomime, right back to uh, to you know to to Dan Lino playing uh, playing Widow Twanky in the whatever it was eighteen nineties. Mm. Uh, you, you know, so some of his costume ideas, his makeup ideas, his expressions, you don't get better than that. It's my, you know, I think it's wonderful. And what's your favourite? What's your favourite panto? Oh well, it's always you know, it's always the one I'm doing now. It's the one uh, I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I think Aladdin is Aladdin. I'm really well, I'm Aladdin's, really, Aladdin's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. Thanks for taking time to go through all of that. It's going to That's look right. absolutely beautiful when it when it's there on stage. Yeah, well, we're business. we're getting there with it now. I'm starting doing technical drawings for it and things. So yeah, yeah. Great. Right.